So a lot of stories have been coming out recently in the last few days concerning Microsoft and the Xbox One. Some updates coming to devs, which will eventually be passed off to owners. So I've been posting these stories up on VGN and my Twitter feed. So this vid is going to be kind of like a compilation of all these stories. So first up... Microsoft getting serious about the security concerning Xbox One. Uh, so they are looking to give hackers a little bit of hell, apparently. They posted up a new job posting, and it says in the following in the job description, Are you passionate about consumer devices and security? Enjoy your Xbox for entertainment and gaming? Would you like to build a device so secure that it is a nightmare for the most skilled hackers? yet a delight for all our customers. Have you ever found yourself thinking about how to protect a game or app running on the Xbox console or prevent anyone from cheating when playing online? If so, then we might have a very good opportunity for you. Our team sits within the core operating systems group and we are looking for a talented, creative, and driven engineer help push the security bar to a new level on the Xbox One platform. Our mission is to realize the vision of making Xbox One the most secure and trustworthy consumer computing device in the world. The team owns overall security implementation for Xbox platform, including core hardware, firmware security, and software, while delivering groundbreaking features central to Microsoft's strategy. It goes on, if you love challenging technical problems and programming close to the metal, this is the job for you. So close to the metal, kind of a term that we've talked about before when referencing DX12. So Microsoft potentially sending out an application to hackers across the globe. So all these people who claim that they want to hack Microsoft just to help them improve their system. Well, now you can go get a job and just help them build a security wall. So this could be related to the recent DDoS attack over the holidays. Or it might be something related to the recent story where a group of hackers released the basic uh, instructions and manual for the Xbox One, the SDK. Uh, so that has been out in the open. So there's been several people who's taken a look at that and we are starting to get news out of that document that's been leaked. So Eurogamer is reporting that up until recently, developers only had access to six cores for the Xbox One for developing games. So the Xbox and the PS4, they both have eight cores for their CPU. Uh, the Xbox only gives developers access to six of those, and the same with the PS4. But now, with the latest uh, update to the SDK, developers have ability to use the seventh core in the CPU. They said that's going to allow 50 to 80% more of that core to be used for developing games. Um, and Eurogamer points out that some people may have had access to this before this recent update, and they say, quote, this may partly explain why a small amount of multi-platform titles released during quarter four of 2014 may have possessed performance advantages over the PS4 counterparts in certain scenarios. And so what they're talking about is all the games that I listed out to you in that 1080p zealots video uh, so if you didn't see that i'll link it at the end of this video and also in the description box um so you know is microsoft getting ready are they opening up more cores to the cpu uh to start getting ready for dx12 because we all have heard that dx12 is supposed to you know really take advantage of having a multi-core CPU. And so it's supposed to allow them to work more in unison because right now, even though all cores can be used, or at least seven of them at this point, uh, still one core is mainly doing most of the work according to what we've been told so far by developers. So also, aside from that, uh, there was also a story just a few days ago from the Dying Light developer uh, he recently acknowledged that the Xbox One and the PS4 are both going to be running Dying Light at 1080p, 30 frames per second. 
uh, and that they were using the SDK before the latest ones. So they weren't using the brand new SDK that just came out, but they were using a pretty recent version, and they were really bragging about how much the SRAM had improved, the ability to use it. Uh, so, you know, the SRAM has been deemed a bottleneck by a lot of people, and a lot of people were saying that it was a dumb move by Microsoft to implement this. Uh, but if you pay attention to what Microsoft has been saying at some of these conferences and behind the scenes, uh, they've been saying that you can hold a lot of data and textures in that little bit of SRAM. And so they are finally getting the tools up to par. And you know, this may be another sign that the stories early on that Microsoft was way behind on development tools for the Xbox One whenever they launched were all true. And that it's taken a while for Microsoft to get ready. And of course, they're getting ready for 2015 to be a big deal when it comes to their software across pretty much all the platforms. So the Dying Light dev quote said, the new API allows you to do a lot more with the SRAM, things devs have wanted to do but were not easily accessible. This together with better tools allowed us to really improve performance and tweak SRAM usage. So some real world benefits from a developer. And then finally, right before I was about to start recording this, I saw another article pop up. Uh, this one concerning that update and the leaks that have been put out there by the hackers um, that showed, you know, what benefits have been achieved. And there was a note in these documents that said Microsoft had reduced the amount of memory utilized during runtime. Uh, they said, quote, Microsoft achieved this by updating the graphics driver so that memory overhead of vertex and pixel shader objects is reduced. According to the test, this saw a reduction of 45% in memory usage. And it noted that this also was getting ready for DX12. So we've been saying from the very beginning that on both platforms, the tools are going to get a lot better. The games are going to get better as we move along. Um, so, you know, lowering memory usage, opening up the cores just here in the last few weeks. All of that a good sign, I think, uh, because I think that means devs are just now starting to get the tools that hopefully they can start using to see better improvements in the next set of games that are getting ready to release and hopefully more CPU means more frames per second at least I hope so and then finally we had two other job listings by Microsoft looking for software engineers to take the power of the Xbox one and improve the current avatar system so your avatar that really hasn't been used or talked much about uh, since the Xbox one release um, they're wanting to do a better job of that and they said they're going to hire some people to do graphics and better capabilities. They want to take this thing and expand it uh, to multiple devices. They said iOS, Android, desktop, mobile. So we've talked about this plenty of times before. Microsoft wanting to bring everything under one roof, one little ecosystem uh, with Windows 10 and DirectX 12 and this could be another sign of it. Taking the avatar system and trying to make it cross-platform. So, lots of items in the news, all of it on VGN, and follow my Twitter for updates throughout the day. Uh, you'll probably see it on VGN before you'll see anybody on YouTube make a video about it, so keep that in mind. If you want to read these articles that I talked about, links down in the description box. If you enjoyed this, I appreciate your thumbs up. That does it for me, The Red Dragon. I uh, will see you next time. Thanks for watching.